cats. You're not allowed to have a cat. <laughs> really? Oh, you're so lucky. That means some boys can't have boys. But this little girl wasn't allowed to have a cat. Her mommy said no. <gasps> oh, dear. But, mommy, I want a cat. I really want a cat. What part of the word no don't you understand? The N or the O? It's no, no cats. But, mommy, you know that I've got no brothers and I've got no sisters. I'm all alone. I need a cat. I need a cat. No, you must understand that the house that we're living in doesn't belong to us and we are not allowed to have cats. The owner of this house sneezes <gasps> a tissue when there's cats in the house and he said, no cats. Well, said the little girl, then I'll just take my cat problem to Jesus. And she prayed about her cat problem every night. While she was praying, her mommy was thinking and wondering, mm, I wonder if it's a good idea for a little girl to pray about something that mommy has already said no for. <gasps> oh, dear. But mommy didn't quite know how to talk to her girl about this problem because every night the little girl was praying. One day the mommy went to the lounge and she saw some little bits of orangey, gingerish fur on the lounge couch. She brushed it off and she said, what's that? Oh, the next morning, mommy goes to the lounge and she sees a whole lot of orangey, gingerish fur on the couch in the lounge. Well, mommy was very busy brushing off fur. Every morning, mommy comes to the lounge and she sees there's fur on the couch. <gasps> One afternoon at about four o'clock, the little girl came running into the house and she said, Mommy, Mommy, there's a cat sleeping under the tree in the garden. Come look, come look, Mommy. And Mommy and the little girl rushed outside and they saw the cat sleeping under the tree in the garden. And Mommy said, Oh, it's an orangey, gingerish cat. Oh, now I know where the fur is coming from. You naughty cat. In the day, you're sleeping under the tree, and at night when it's cold, you're coming into my house and you're sleeping on the couch. <gasps> but you're not allowed to sleep on the couch. I think we should go and ask the neighbors if anybody's missing a cat. So the mommy and the girl walked around, knock, 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 knock. Knock, knock, knock on all the doors, but nobody is missing a cat. Nobody is missing a cat. Nobody knows about an orangey, gingerish cat. Well, said Mommy, if nobody knows about this cat, maybe the cat is hungry. Maybe the cat wants some food to eat. So Mommy gave the cat some food to eat. The cat ate all the food up. The cat was very hungry. Maybe the cat is thirsty. Let's give the cat some water. And the cat drank the water all up. <sighs> well, I suppose we've got a cat now, said Mommy. Oh, yes, said little girl. I think we should give him a name. Okay, says Mommy. What's his name? The little girl said his name should be Garfield because he's orange. He's orangey and he's gingerish, so his name must be Garfield. Okay. Well, the little girl was very happy with her new cat, and the first thing she did was she taught her little cat not to sleep on the couch. She said her cat should sleep in the bedroom on her bed or in mommy's bed. And with a little bit of help from mommy, she managed to teach the cat, and the cat was very obedient. Mommy helped her to know that we don't need to give the cat a hiding. We don't need to hurt the cat when the cat is naughty. We just make a loud noise like that, or we clap our hands, boom, like that, and then the cat gets a fright, and then the cat is obedient. And with patience, the cat learned that he mustn't sleep on the couch in the lounge, he must sleep in the bedroom. But that wasn't the end of the cat problems, because here comes another problem. 
a big problem because now this little girl's got a cat and she's not allowed to have the cat. And here comes the owner of the house and he's coming to visit. <gasps> and as he sits down on the couch, kadoof, here comes the cat in by the window. A cat? You've got a cat? I told you you're not allowed to have a cat. But where's the cat going? He's going there. Oh, says the little girl, he's on his way to the bedroom because I've taught him he's not allowed to sleep on the couch. Oh, you've got a very obedient cat. Well, I like that cat. You can keep that cat. <gasps> Phew, the little girl was so happy. She was so relieved. Now she can keep her cat and there's no more problems. No, said mommy, that's not the end of your cat problems. I need more money and I'm going to rent out a part of this house and we're going to get new people that are coming to stay here and the new people have got a big dog. Now, cats and dogs don't like each other. And mommy said, but I'm so worried because this dog might hurt your cat. So, what are we going to do about that problem? Oh, that's not a problem, said the little girl. I'm just going to take this problem to Jesus. And she prayed to Jesus again about her cat and her cat problem. And she said, dear Jesus, please look after my cat. Save him from the big dog. Well, the big dog was very happy to be in that garden because it was a beautiful garden. The big dog was running around all over the place. He was very active because he was still young. He enjoyed that garden so much that he even ate the plants right down to the ground. Well, mommy said, if I just keep the door closed, then the cat won't um, be in trouble because the dog will be outside and the cat will be inside. But then mommy forgot to close the door the one day and the dog came running into the house. <gasps> The cat got such a fright, he jumped up onto the top ledge of the shelf in the kitchen and he stayed there the whole day. He didn't want to come down. He was all puffed up, his tail was puffed up and his eyes were big. He didn't want to come down to eat, he didn't want to come down to drink his water. He was just cross because there was a big dog in his yard and the dog came into the house. Well. That night, the cat was still up high on the shelf, up high near the roof, didn't want to come down, and the little girl took her problem to Jesus again. And she said, dear Jesus, please help my cat. The next day, the dog got into the house again, and the cat took one look at the situation, and the cat went, <laughs> and the cat jumped off from the top shelf, onto the dog's back. The dog got such a fright, oh, he ran out of the house. And you know what? He had so much respect for that cat after that. Every time he saw the cat, he stopped running around like a mad thing. And he put his tail between his legs and he walked slowly, very slowly and very carefully away from the cat because he as big as what he was, was scared of that tiny little cat. Little children, I want you to learn lots of lessons from this story because this is a true story. That's why I told it to you today. It really happened. It's a true story. And I want you to know that there's lots of good things that happen to us when we are obedient. Just like Garfield was obedient, he got a beautiful family to look after him with a lovely girl that loved him a lot and a nice warm place to sleep. There were good things that happened to him because he was obedient. Then also, I want you to remember that we can take all our problems to Jesus. We can pray about anything even our cats and our dogs. He loves you very much and he knows what you need and what you want. He hears all your prayers. We can have faith and know that Jesus loves us all very much. You can go back to your seats now. <laughs>